Hey everybody, certainly glad you could join me today. In this video, we're going to look at structuring code and optimizing your files to make working a lot easier. Before I get started though, a huge thank you to my members and patrons. Your names will be running across the bottom of the screen at the end of the video. So the way that we structure our code is largely going to depend on what type of game we're creating and that's something that is going to become more evident as we create different types of games together. But ultimately, there are some ground rules, some rules of thumb that we can stick to, which will make life a lot easier. For example, firstly, understanding that as long as your game files end in .rpy, Rempy will include them as part of the code, which means that, for example, I don't have an init python or any kind of um, initialization code in this file it just simply ends in .rpy so i can have a separate file for all of my define and default statements which means that i always know where to go when i'm looking for those likewise i have a different file for every screen this just makes it easier to identify problems in the code and to rectify and make alterations. So I've got a screen for the tool tips. I've got a screen for the tips here. This is the sort of the pop-up screens that appear with a close button. And this just allows me to make changes to this file easily and access the data very quickly. Likewise, I have a prologue file which just contains the intro scene, which is the bit of game that appears before any interactions can take place. Having this in a separate file means that I'll be able to add that uh, wherever and I can also add things like a tutorial into this code to make it easy to find nice and quickly. Then I have my classes file. This is where all of my initialization Rempy code or Python code goes. So as you can see, I've created my music channels, set their volumes, and then started defining my classes. So we've got MPC class there, and then I create a list of MPCs, and I start filling it with classes or instances of classes. Then I have my clickies, and I do the same thing. I create a list, a 100 long list, and I start populating that list as you can see with instances of that class. Then we've got my location class on place class. Exactly the same thing again, create the class, then create a list of those and then append or create the list of a specific length depending on how you want to do it. And you can populate that class there. And then I start having my procedures. So my unlock, if I want to unlock a location, if I want to move the sequence on, and this is something specific to this game type. I'll explain more about that later. And then this is the the instance or rather the, the method that decides what music is going to play, whether it's going to start or stop, etc. So then we have, for example, in this game, we have locations we can go to. So I have a file, a game file for every single location, which contains the default actions that happen when you click on something. So I've got a green, the green room is the room that we're in. We've got a book and you can click on it and it will say someone is clearly still reading that. I wouldn't bother touching it. And that's the default. So I can actually add to specific chapters in the game a secondary label which would have the chapter number or the sequence number at the end of it which would overwrite this one and action if we if there's a specific need to click on it to explain that in better detail essentially what happens is the game creates clickies in every room that you can click on and it provides you with a little bit of text however if you get a fetch quest or you're required to interact with a specific object to move the game on, then we can create a second label with the same name but an append on the end of it. So the number of the sequence or the chapter. And then when you click on it, it will call that instead if we're in the right place in the sequence of events. So as you can see, we've got some events here. And this is just, these are events that trigger as we move on through the sequence of events. These are ones that trigger automatically. And then the rest of the events are 
when you click on a person or an object in the room, then it will, if you click on the right thing, then it will move on the sequence of events. Otherwise it will just provide you with some text. What this allows me to do is to create a feeling of life where you can click on a character no matter where you are in the game and they will do something relative relevant to where you are in the game and then obviously you click on the right thing so in the first instance in this game we're in the dorm room of the main character and we actually have to open his bottom drawer to get dressed you pick out basic jeans and t-shirt and get dressed and then we call that next sequence method that we created in our classes file and then it moves on to one underscore one where there's a different set of events when you click on people and that's that allows me to just create a little bit more depth allows you to build up a little bit more of a story behind each character and it means that the player if they so choose can choose to just rattle through the events in the game and not have to worry about it but it just allows you to build up a little bit more of a narrative behind every character. So that's the kind of method that I'm using to create this particular game. But as you can see, every single sequence, every single sort of set of sequences or chapter or whatever you want to call it has its own file. And this just means that if something's not right and I know I'm in sequence one underscore one, I can go straight to that file and I can find it and that means that it's just a lot easier to fault find and a lot quicker. Rempy doesn't care how many files you have as long as they end in .rpy. So you can just keep creating new files to keep yourself organized, keep them in folders. So I've got clickies in one folder. I've got my screens in another folder. I've got uh, character stuff. So for example, if we go to this one, that's just uh, what happens if you click on yourself. And then I've created a file there. I haven't put anything in it yet jennifer.rpy which means that's the stuff that's going to happen if you click on that character outside of a specific sequence um, and that's really all there is to it in the in essence for this particular game i am going to do a let's code series for this type of game to make it a little easier to follow but this is just really kind of a, a bit of a tip video on the fundamentals of creating your games in a organized and structured way that just makes everything so much simpler. And the last thing I wanted to very quickly touch on is your screens. Now, if I go into my main UI screen, as you can see, there's actually very little code inside that. And that's because it uses, we're using the background image screen, we're using the button screen, we're using the character screen, we're using the top bar screen. So all of these elements in our main screen are defined in their own individual files. And again, that makes life just so much easier. I hope you found this useful guys. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I know it's been a bit of a while since I did any Rampoy or Dash Studio stuff. I'm just in the process of unpacking all of my stuff in my new home. And then I'll be getting on and doing a lot more of these videos. But uh, thanks very much for watching guys. If you do feel like you've learned anything in this one, feel free to give us a thumbs up and a subscribe and a comment down below. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care of yourselves guys. Bye bye.